This is Gary Gaiman with the Dominate the Day podcast. The purpose of this podcast is to help you get 1% better in your business, provide clarity, and give you some ideas that will help you grow your business. If you're ready to dominate the day, let's go. Dominate the day, that's what we're about to do. If you don't want to dominate, then this podcast ain't for you. But if you are, then keep listening. Because every single damn day, the mission is, it's to dominate. You already know. We're here to dominate the day. So if you want to dominate every day, then let's go. It's time to grow. This is another episode of Dominate the Day. So, you've been at this a while. Tell us some of the lessons that you've learned. What a, you know, one or two like things that come to mind as uh, you know what these are really important for people to take away, and uh, if they if they take heart with these, like it can really help them. Well, I would I would say really to you know for one, don't think you know everything because we don't know everything. We think we do, but we I, you know we learn every day. Um, but as you know, I, I had a company before this one; it failed. Um, you know, that company failed. We we had the wrong business model. Our business model was was built on volume. Um, it was built on, you know, advertising cheap prices, living socials, coupon, uh, groupons, all this stuff, stuff. And, you know, we thought that we were smarter than everybody else. That, you know, it doesn't matter. We're gonna we're gonna get repeat customers and they're gonna be fair us and they're gonna they're gonna get up sales and <sighs> that's not really the case. Yeah. So uh, that company was very, very stressful. Uh, it was extremely stressful. Um, I walked out of there in 2017, bought my partner out, uh, got online, met you, and um, rebranded my company and, and came up with a whole new a whole new mindset. And that mindset was, like, we don't want to advertise for cheap customers anymore. We want to advertise and get customers that are willing to pay, you know, it's great money but get a good, good value. Like, we're not ripping people off. Yeah. Um, we're giving them awesome value. So I would say, you know, people out there listening, if you have a service company, you think that to get the phone to ring, you ha- have to lower your price. You have to be cheap. You need to rethink that because that's that's a mistake that can sink you really quickly. Yeah. And it's a shame because I see guys go down that path as as times get slow. Because as business owners, we have roller coasters. You know, we have roller coasters. And, you know, I, I talk to people, and as, as the roller coaster starts to go down – they want to start just dropping their prices right away because they're afraid. I'm like, just it's going to come back. Relax. It's part of the ride. You know, you, you got to do some other things. Uh, throw some value out there. You know, yeah. for me, hey, we'll throw a free drive a driveway cleaning with a house wash, whatever it is. We're not gonna, but we're not gonna lower our prices. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's what I think that's what my what I would tell anybody. Just be careful. So 2017 is when you re- you, you rebranded. How long had you been doing that business model? Uh, we've been doing it. We were doing that business model uh, for about five years. Five years. Yeah. So obviously, uh, I'm going to guess some of the stress probably is related to uh, customers. Like, Absolutely. Because you got you know uh, you ha- your guys were incented to probably do as much as possible, and yep. so that that cut corners. What, what were some of the other like stressors that came from that for the people that, I mean, cause there's a lot of people listening. that think, you know, I'll lower my prices. Everything will be fine. I'll keep getting work and not understanding the things that go behind that, that are going to come out and bite you in the ass and make it stressful. So what, what were some of the other stressors that you, you had to deal with? So employees was the second thing you said, customers. So employees, they are paid. They are paid commission. So when they went out the door with, the, with their tickets, and if they couldn't sell for some reason that day, they just had bad attitudes. They weren't happy, um, so they wouldn't take care of our equipment at all. I mean, they would. We had employees that would break equipment on purpose just because they didn't want to work. Um, that's the other issue, you know. When you're when you're running at so so small profit margins, you know, when a transmission in a truck blows up or a machine blows up, you know. It's a lot more tougher than now you have to go buy a transmission, right? It's hard when your profit margins are so low. Yeah. Um, dealing with the, the, the volume of customers we were dealing with that were just coming in at one time and they all they all just wanted this house washing deal, you know, they didn't they didn't they didn't care about their properties. So we were getting the worst properties. We were getting the properties that looked like somebody just just 
they weren't clean in 30 years, probably, because they really didn't care. The only reason they got it done is because they, they got a Groupon. They got a Living Social. They seen a truck for 149 a whole house wash going down the street. Yeah. Um, so employees and customers are definitely my biggest, were my biggest pain points. And obviously, profits. Yeah. You know, yeah. the profits. You brought up Living Social, man. We did a Living Social in 20... 20- 14, I think, begin spring of 2014. Somebody talked us into, hey, it'd be a great. All these people are going to call you away from, you know, trying to get the living social and you'll be able to upsell them. That was the furthest thing from the truth. Um, it was the worst, the worst pricing model that and Groupon, like they're basically the same, uh, the worst pricing model ever. And then you didn't get paid until like, 60, 90 days later, and uh, uh, you said that, and I, I got like a pit in my stomach remembering those three months we were dealing with that crap. But, you know, it goes to the value that you provide as a company to your customer. And if you're, um, if you're shortchanging uh, the value that your company provides by lowering your price, the customer's not going to see you as valuable either. I mean, it's a it's it's a two edged sword. Like, okay, so let's say your average ticket, uh, or or you know, you're you're going to drop the house wash price that maybe normally you charge four hundred bucks, and you're going to charge two hundred bucks. Okay, uh, and you get five people to sign up for that in one day. Well, first of all, it's going to be a long ass day. <laughs> number one, number two you're not going to be able to provide the value that you can provide because you got a customer that's waiting on you to do that $200 house wash. And to the customer, the $200 house wash is the same value as the $400 house wash. And therein lies the problem. What do you think is the biggest thing that you were able to do to help you increase pricing or average tickets that, eliminate it having to worry about, you know, selling your price. Cause that's what everybody taught. I got to sell my price. I got to sell, sell it back. What did you do that helped you be able to increase average tickets without really just raising prices arbitrarily? Uh, you mean now with this company? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, value providing our customers with a, you know, f- from the whole customer journey from, from when they call us, when they get the proposal, the whole step through it's, it's, it's laid out very professionally. Um, the value we give them, the, the, the steps we take during the house wash. You know, we don't just have an estimate saying we're going to wash your house. You know, it's it's really descriptive what we're going to do. We're going to cover your your electrical outlets. We're going to take care of your plants. We're going to protect your property. You know, um, all the steps that we do, our final wash, all all these different steps that we do that are extra. Um, now it becomes where you know you can't compare apples to apples, right? You can't compare this quote, my quote with another regular quote, cause it's not the same. Yeah. And so I think value is, is really where, where it's been for us. Um, and edu- educating our clients also, I spend some time educating them. Um, because they don't know, you know, they think pressure washing a home is just pressure washing a home. They have yeah. no idea that it's not just pressure washing a home. There's things that can go really wrong when you get your house yeah. washed. Absolutely. Uh, so we talked a little bit about the PWMCA prior, um, anything else you got going on, any projects coming up or any speaking events that you're doing that, uh, you're, you're focused on making happen or may, maybe another type of project that, uh, that's going on that, uh, you want to tell us about. Oh, well, right now I'm working on next year's annual, but <laughs> besides that, you know, I am working on something, uh, trying to get it panned out to do something, uh, down there in like the Kentucky, Ohio area, um, trying to do an event down there. So one of our awesome vendors in the industry, I'm not going to mention right now because we haven't ironed it out. So I don't want to get anybody angry, but we're working on getting that done. And then uh, that'd be great. Give guys opportunity to, to learn and network. And, you know, I I had, I had a really good conversation with, with a buddy of mine last week and you got to get him on the podcast, man. Paul Gianni out of New York. You know, he came to my Myrtle beach event in 2000, I think in 19, yeah. It may have been 20, but I think it was 19. He's out in, up in New York. He said, look, I've never been off of my island. I've never been – I've always been here. I've never – and he, had, he has a nice little company yeah. at the time. He goes, I came to your event. He goes, 
the people that I met changed my life completely. Now his he has a, a really successful growing company, and he told me that he runs his company. He's like, I run my company now, like I have no arms or legs. That's the way. That's the mindset I have. That's how my company's ran. Because I was out taking down Christmas lights a few you know last month, and he, he called me. He's like, What are you doing taking down lights? I'm like, Because I like to. He's like, No, man, no. He's like, You. He goes, I've now run my company like it has no arms or legs where I don't, I'm not touching anything like that. And this is, this is somebody who's been in business for a while. He's, he's been in business for a while. He came to an event. He never thought he had to go to an event. He came to that event and he was like, just blown away. So now he's a, he's a big, he's a really big supporter of the events now. Cause it, it really, it opened his eyes, man. Cause these events aren't about, you know, the, all these events out there aren't about, Oh, I'm going to go there. This guy's going to tell me how to spray bleach or whatever, or whatever you do, how to cut grass or, you know, how to clean air ducts. These events are all to meet new people, learn new techniques and uh, build relationships that can really help your business. Yeah. I think uh, the piece that people miss the most is the connection that you make with others in your industry and the things you can learn from that. Uh, things you can gain from that, you know, um, I've been fortunate that, you know, I've met some people outside of events, but at the same time, there've been a lot of people because of events that I've met, uh, Dave Carroll, Kurt Kempton, like those are two people that the relationship started at an association event. And, uh, you know, Dave is probably, uh, you know, if, if, if I'm saying, hey, who are some of your closest friends? Dave would be one of those people. And it was because of an event. And we've, you know, I've learned from him. He's learned from me. Um, you can't take away the value or you can't understand the value that that holds until until you experience it. And people think, like you said, it's something else, right? They think they're going to go there and they're going to, learn how to do something better and you will learn how to do something better, but it's probably not going to do have anything to do with the actual work of your business. It's going to be either about yourself or how to do uh, a process better that helps you do something. You know, Paul saying that he doesn't use his arms and legs. I mean, he is creating a business, not a leveraged job. A lot of us have a leveraged job to where, we have to show up. We have to be available. Maybe we're not out in the field, but if we're not doing the work, things don't get done. Uh, you know, and that's to me, that's the biggest focus of any business owner that they should be really pursuing, regardless of how big you want your company to be or not, is get a business that can operate without you all the time. And uh, it's possible. We, number one, it's a mindset thing. And number two, it's giving uh, giving trust to people that you've put in place to be able to be successful. And um, that's the hardest, that's, to me, that's one of the hardest things we do. Um, you know, I, I, made, uh, I made 2023 the year that all the processes that are done in my business, I don't have to do. Now, I've removed myself from probably... of the process is already. It's my strategy. We have meetings on a weekly basis. We talk about what we're testing, what we're doing. Like I do all that, but I used to do, I used to do the majority of the work. Now, like the only thing I really do is sell. And this year, the goal is I don't want to be the person selling. And, uh, you know, we added someone in January who she's the first person that's ever, ever sold a client for our company that wasn't me. And it's crazy. Like it's a good feeling. But what Paul is saying is creating something that you're not needed. That's a business. And you don't and, and that's the kind of stuff you can learn by hanging out with different people at at these events. I mean and then like some of the speakers you had this year, uh you know, like you had uh what San, uh Santi, like he's I mean who doesn't he speak for? Uh, they're, 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 like uh, he's uh, he's one of John Maxwell speakers, correct? I think, and then um, he works in Howard's organization. Like, did, 
guy's in, guy's intelligent. Uh, and you could sit there and take just a little bit from what he said, implement your business uh, and, and see some changes. So my advice is get to an event, like at least do one a year, you know, um, and take your team, like take people that are on your team that are valued members of the team that have invested into being there and give them something to look forward to and to, and to like work towards so that they can see, okay, there's, there's more to this. There, there, there's more to this than, than what we're doing. And um, yeah, I mean, if you haven't been to an event, get to one. If you have been to one, but you haven't been to the PWMCA, get to the PWMCA. I mean, come on. What other event has someone singing party in the USA <laughs> at a high level for karaoke? I mean, do you know of any, Jamie? Because I, I don't know. know any. I don't know. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. So cool, man. Uh, so tell us how people can get in touch with you, uh, where where they can go find out more information about you and the stuff that's uh, that's going on. Yeah, so if they want to find out about the association, they go to pwmca.org. Um, if they just want to follow me and just check me out, I'm Jamie Schmidt. I'm on Facebook. Um, I, have a, I have a couple of groups. I'm in Pressure Washing Motivation is my group. I'm in a couple of Gary's groups. Um, so I'm in all the Facebook groups and a lot of industry. So, uh, I'm around, but if you want to learn about the association, pwmca.org is the place to go and, uh, tells you all about it there. And, and we're growing and we got some, some pretty cool resources coming this year, which I'm, I'm pretty happy and stoked about. Absolutely. Yeah. Get there, check Jamie out. Um, and, uh, man, get to the event, like eat. If you're a home service business owner, regardless if you're in exterior cleaning, carpet cleaning, dryer vent cleaning, not cleaning, junk removal, like whatever, get to the event. There's a lot of good resources there that can help you. And uh, inside of the organization as well, inside the association, a uh, ton of good stuff. So go check them out. We'll have those in the show notes. Jamie, it's been a great time hanging out. Uh, Dominate Nation, go remember, dominate today. And uh, I'll, I'll be talking to you guys soon. Dominate the day. That's what we're about to do. If you don't want to dominate, then this podcast ain't for you. But if you are, then keep listening. Because every single damn day, the mission is, it's to dominate. You already know. We're here to dominate the day. So if you want to dominate every day, then let's go. It's time to grow. This is another episode of Dominate the Day.